Okay, first things first, let's just check the volume levels. They're looking good. Okay, what's that asking about? YouTube control panel? Yeah, we don't need that. Good. Um, let's go and jump inside the airplane, shall we? And get rid of the covers and the wheel chocks. So let's have a look outside. Yep, they're gone, which is good. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to run through getting the airplane up and running, if I remember how to. So main power goes on. Master battery goes on. Inverter goes to number one. And then we, yeah, I'm going to control this by hand. So we go to ground start on the left engine, and then we start the left engine. We'll wait for the RPM to come up. So through 10%. And we advance this on. So Simon Crocker says, Good morning, JB. Morning, Simon. So we have an engine. So we can put the generator for the left engine to on, and we can start the right engine. So we're waiting for 10% on the right engine. Then we... Oh, that should have already been on... <laughs> if you start up, and then we've pushed it on to normal. It's interesting how it moves around, isn't it? So let's close the canopy. And now that's running. Sorry, that's the battery switch, isn't it? You can't quite see the generator. There you go. So the generators are running, the inverters are on, so we can go and busy ourselves with things like the lights. So we'll put the external lights on to landing and normal lights. We didn't do the this is where it's a little bit different than normal. Um, in the sequence or procedures that are listed in the aircraft, doing the external lights is almost last, but in a commercial aircraft you would put that anti-collision or beacon lights on early doors to, to let ground crew know you're doing things, but I guess this thing would always be surrounded by ground crew anyway. So let's go and put this on to norm on the IFF. Even though we're not in a combat environment, so it's a bit useless. Uh, we'll go and power up the radios. Okay. Okay, so just having a dig around looking at what we've got here. So they've got internal lights, we're not going to need them. Oh, look, the flight sim servers are playing up to date. So we've got cargo lights as well. Seat adjustment. So let's go and have a look around the airplane with the control keys. So control two, three, four, five. So this is then the rear seat for control five. Uh, six is the breakers which are behind the co-pilot and there's loads of them and they all seem to work they've all been configured there's the um, storage nine zero it's an interesting one and 
we can change the dome type so if we go now to control A we can see out of the back we can stir the controls around and see that happening okay yeah so I'm just reading the live stream comments Simon's saying that I'm, I'm the same way military aircraft normally in flight simulator are not my thing at all but this one is a bit different because it's not really a combat aircraft um, okay so let's it's interesting that flight idle is quite a long way forwards so almost 50% mark I might put a throttle curve on it so I'm at my 50% mark on the Airbus quadrant and that's the point where you start to get some throttle Let's go and put the head tracking on. So yeah, I'm having to increase quite a lot of um, power just to get it to taxi. China Lake scenery is fantastic, isn't it? It's very good. So we've got a museum colour scheme for this, or livery I should say. <coughs> so I think this is authentic back to um, Vietnam basically. It's an old marine colour scheme of a, a long retired um, aircraft. It's swaying around on the wheels. It's very good, isn't it? So we'll put the condition levers all the way forwards. Full throttle. Coming up through 70 knots, 80 knots. I'm not using flaps for takeoff. So it's just going straight up with normal wing loading. Let's have a look outside. It is a great looking aeroplane, isn't it? Okay, so we can pull the condition levers back to normal flight. And fly over towards the hills.
visibility out of it is great. There is an option to have a gun sight. If I can click on the EFB link, there we go. So, uh, where is it? So I've not played around with this at all. So obviously you don't really have working weapons. But, oh, there's the gun sight. It's collimating, collimated even. Sorry. Very good. Obviously it's not operational because Flight Simulator doesn't simulate weapons, but there you go. I, I can't get over they've put this in the airplane. It's ridiculous. You can have GPS, so it's actually quite cool that, that it's a pretty solid lump bolted on top of the cabin here, on top of the, um, sorry, the instrument panel. Anyway, so... I'm going to turn the GPS back off because we can use little nav map alongside just to figure out where we are. So we're flying from China Lake, which is rapidly disappearing behind us, out towards the hills to go and have a play. And the reason we're doing it is because this thing is extremely manoeuvrable. I'm just trimming it out. There we go. So just to give you some idea about manoeuvrability, it's mad. So I haven't tried any high G turns or anything like that with it yet, but we're going along. We're full throttle at the moment. We're just edging 200 knots. So 220 knots seems to be about flat out. What do the temperatures do with running the engines flat out? So torque is fine. RPM is right up against the limit, 100%. Temperatures, there, seem, there does seem to be a red line and we are up against it almost. So if we come back to say 75% throttle, it's got constant RPM Propellers, that's obviously controlled by the condition levers. So yeah, so we just, by pulling the power back, we're just reducing the torque. And it hasn't made an appreciable difference. Obviously, we're bleeding a little bit of speed off. So there is no need to thrash the engines all the time. So, AV Apollo is saying, when was I in Prague? I went for a long weekend away with my other half a couple of weeks ago. Drank lots of Staro Pramen. <laughs> Explored the old castle. Um, we went to, yeah, we walked all over the city. Walked across the Charles Bridge, took lots of photographs. We were very lucky with the weather. Is the Bronco coming with an external weapons app? Yes, it is. So it's from the marketplace. Obviously, it doesn't have weapons, but you install an add-on in your community folder, and then that gives you the weapons. So, for example, if we just go and put the EFB on, 
we can go into weapons and we could say we want the um, LAU 68s for example so we're going to do that now they are 61s and now they are and we can have the pylons with the sidewinders on them as well and we can have the guns he says that he can't even click on it so if you have a look outside now we are fully loaded But I'm going to remove some of the heavier stuff because I want to have a fly around and throw the aeroplane around. Okay, there's some texturing issues. Must be some server problems going on today. There's um, some missing panels. So, AV Apollo, unfortunately I can't really read the screen, reply to every message, and fly the aeroplane at the same time. So, if you get angry with me about not being able to do that, I will kick you from the livestream chat. I'm just saying, read my message, read my message, read my message repeatedly, we'll get you kicked. I'm not being mean or nasty about that, I just don't have four pairs of arms and six pairs of eyes. Very manoeuvrable, isn't it? But again, this is what it was designed for. I think the um, is it the type is forward fire control. Is that the the name for this thing's job? Identifying targets, reporting coordinates. Obviously being able to stay low and fast means you have, it's very difficult to shoot you, basically. Whoa, look at that. I was wondering about that. If you look outside... Um, yeah, you can see it's got mechanical devices that that kick up on the wing can you see them and it's to kind of try and prevent some i haven't switched the yaw damper on let's go and turn it on see how much difference it makes so you can see then when we were rolling it's still yours a lot your damper the yaw damper doesn't do a lot so you get adverse yaw so when you are barreling between Look at that, the amount of yaw there. Whoa. <laughs> so let's take this up to altitude and do some tests with the yaw. So how quickly does the speed come off? The speed comes off really quickly. Let's 
Right. I'm just going to get some altitude. We'll go out over the plane over here. You could see how much yaw I could induce. I'm just doing it now. Look, left stick. Oh my word, you can you can throw the aeroplane sideways to an enormous extent. Probably by 30 degrees. Let's try that from outside so you can see it. So, 40 degrees even. Obviously it becomes enormously unstable when you do that. And that's why it has these enormous tailplanes. I'm trying to see if I can get it to depart controlled flight. But although, yeah, although... <laughs> although it um, becomes unstable, it doesn't ever depart. So what about if we stall it? Just trying to see if I can get it to spin. I don't think it will. Let's go and see about doing some approaches over China Lake then, then to see how we get on with it. Let's get a bearing to follow. Let's have a look at the map. So we're going more or less the right direction. So the airfield's out there. Let's go flat out. Uh, we'll go lower across the valley floor on the way back. So if we dive, what's the maximum speed it's rated for? It's quite a draggy aircraft, so I can't imagine it will go that fast. And will it start creaking? Apparently not. Well, it is built like a proverbial anvil. We are losing elevator authority though at speed. The elevators have become very heavy and not very responsive. Pylons. <laughs> Nearly. More pylons. Just bob up above them. Okay, let's just have a look outside, see where we are. Yeah, we're heading in the right direction still. Obviously we're not using any GPS, we're just navigating by hand today. It's very stable, I'll give it that. Should we drop down a little bit lower? Use the shadow for guidance.
Okay, we can see the lights of the base now. It's a beacon. It's either a beacon flashing or it's a piece of hardware reflecting the sun. I think it's a beacon. It's probably the radar picking the sun up as it rotates. Get some altitude. What head tracking am I using is being asked by Peter Armstrong. It's just the Toby eye tracker, but I don't actually use the eye tracking. I just use the head tracking part of it. So this has a smoke generator, which I haven't played with. Should we try it? Okay, smoke generator works. Okay, so this is China Lake. So let's go and find out which way the wind is today over the airfield. So we're looking at runway 21, which is directly below us here. So we'll be coming in, we're looping around to the left and doing a practice approach. What does the message say behind us? Warning, this seat is loaded with explosive cartridges. Caution, do not operate parachute release. That's a really good place to have that, isn't it? Behind your head where you can't read it. <laughs> Put a warning where you can't see it. Great. So I've pulled the throttles back. Should we go and watch the undercarriage come out? Okay, so I'm on idle on the throttles. And the speed is bleeding off. Got stall warning. So I've gone back to 50% the throttle there was just enough to hold it. It's actually accelerating, okay. Just gonna do a few practice 
approaches just to see how it behaves. Different configurations. So yeah, you, you do need to be careful about it not holding um, a straight line through the air. It will. You do have to use a rudder actively to point it in the right direction. So crosswinds are probably going to be fun. But it does mean you could do an enormously strong crosswind landing with it. So it doesn't like going slower than about 60 knots. So flaps back to takeoff, full throttle. I've not gone for takeoff condition on the propellers, but we'll just see how it behaves. Yeah, it's fine. Gear back up. Flaps back up. I don't think it has spoilers. You wouldn't expect it to. Okay, so let's get the gear back down. So let's stay higher and do a steep approach and see how it behaves. And maybe do some... Um, side slipping just to see how it behaves in the side slip. That's interesting. Those ailerons are enormously sensitive, even at low speeds.
Okay, this time we'll come in steep. We'll also use reverses when we hit the ground. So, let's put the gear down and the flaps down early. So the warning is because I've put the flaps down before the gear. It will side slip so much, it's crazy. Whoa, dropped a wing. And that's how you crash a plane. But that's why we're doing this, we're testing it. I have got damage switched off by the way, and that's why I got away with that. That's the closest I've got to seeing it depart. Let's try it again. Look at it climb. With the power over those flaps. It's insane. Okay, let's try that again then, with a little bit of altitude so we can get away with it. So I went from one side to the other. I was already at low airspeed. Yeah, it's not gonna recover from that. That's interesting. So earlier on, we couldn't get it to do it, and now we can. So when you've got gear down and flaps down, it's a different animal. That's the difference. They make it unstable. So let's go and try that at altitude. So we'll retract everything to get some height. So with the gear and flaps, it becomes unstable. Without them, it's incredibly stable. Um, it is payway, yes, I'm just reading the live stream comments there. So let's just get a bit of altitude and turn back over the airfield. Okay, so get down. Let's simulate what we did. Flaps fully down. Power off. And it's diving for the floor. And oh, it dropped a wing then, hilariously. Oh my word. won't quite spin. Oh yes it will. That was interesting, okay. I think we understand what's happening with it now then. So yeah, with full flaps and gear it's much more unstable. Obviously, because, yeah, look at that. Dropped a wing again. So I'm going to use slew to get it out of that. So we don't have to go and go in circles. You saw that happen, though. That was impressive. 
So in other words, don't fly around with flaps and gear down. Only do them once you're on a stab only use them once you're on a stabilized approach. So what's in this scenery that's in the texture? Various bits of aeroplane down there. It looks like a B-29 with its wings taken off. Is there anything else in the ground scenery? I don't think so. Okay, so following our own warnings that we've seen through testing this beyond the limits, we're going to keep the speed up until we turn in for finals and get it stable before we configure for a landing. Okay, let's turn around then. So, get out. Flaps. Okay, as long as you stay within its limits, it's fine. So this time we'll come in a normal approach and we'll go for reverses when we, or sorry, reverse pitch when we hit, get to the ground. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You can stop very quickly. Let's see if we can take off and stop again within the runway length. So this is stalling, stalling, it's trying to drop a wing and it fell onto the ground. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? So you can reverse then. Just. I'm going to taxi it in now. Enough fun and games. So yeah, that, that was instructive though, to know that it is unstable in the short landing configuration with full flaps and gear down. It's without that, in flight, it's much, much more stable. But the, um, the yaw is quite incredible that you can induce through um, the ailerons. The adverse yaw was very, very strong.
interesting, it's trying to weather vane into the wind because we've got the whip, the wind is coming from this side so it's pushing the tail and rotating the aircraft Going to have a nose around. So this is China Lake. It's a free scenery that I downloaded from FlightSim.2. It's very, very good. Let's go and have a look around some of the aeroplanes. fit through the gap. Just. So we'll go behind these F-35s. I've forgotten what this helicopter's called. There is a version of it on in DCS, I think. What does the default cockpit view look like? So if I press F, that's it. Obviously you can move around using the mouse to control that. You didn't see that. <laughs> or that. Okay. Let's pull the condition levers back and start turning things off. Click spot for that switch is so small. And IFF can come back off. Don't oh the power for the radios, which we didn't use anyway, but it's there. Okay, so open the canopy. We can open the other side as well, it doesn't open as far though. And I think via the EFB we can open various other things around the aeroplane as well. So if we go, let's put the wheel chocks back on. Yeah, we can uncover the engines. So we can have a look. So is that done there? Yes, it is. We can undo the 
various other doors as well. So if we go outside and just slow this camera down a bit. There we go. Can have a look around it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Do I know which China Lake I have downloaded? I think I did a video on it a little while ago and put a link to the to the download in the video. This is amazing, isn't it? I mean, it get once you get really close, it starts to give away some of the detail, but it's very clever. So let's have a look up inside the wheel wells, see what their attention to detail is like. It's pretty good, isn't it? This is the bit I couldn't get over when I was looking at it the other day. Just how well this is modelled in the compartment at the back. It's amazing, really. The weathering as well on some of the liveries is just spectacular. Very, very cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I've got to go and get on with the rest of my Sunday. But I just thought I'd have a little bit of time with this, getting acquainted with it, take it for a fly, push the limits with it, and see how we get on with it. It looks amazing, though, doesn't it? I remember having a model kit of this, as I said earlier, when I was young. Um, but my model kit didn't look as good as this one. <laughs> anyway... I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go and have some weekend. <laughs>